Hi. So can you see how that film would help a person build their belief? If you're watching this course and you skipped past the film, take a minute to just understand what it is that we're involved in, how many thought leaders around the world believe in what we uh, are doing in growing a business and, and building this profession. Uh, it will help you, okay? And that's something that you might want to revisit from time to time. Something that when you get a brand new person, person started, you might want to have them check this out, uh, send it home with them, you know, after they, right after they sign up, have them go watch it, send them a link or whatever you need to do in order for them to be able to see it. Um, that's why it was created. That's why it's there for you. Here's one of the big, biggest things. I, I will tell you my, my experience in, um, in First Steps was pretty awful. My personal experience. I just tried everything and most of it didn't work. I had crazy out-of-the-box expectations because it started with my first introduction. All these million-dollar earners in two seconds and it was so easy and the product sold itself and all you got to do is show up. I don't know anything. I, I'm making all kinds of money. I don't know anything. Um, I, I heard all these different things and, it, and, and then when it didn't work for me, I started to think that there was something wrong with me. I'm not getting off to really fast, fast success. What's wrong with me? So one of the first things that we need to do together is set your expectations properly. Set your expectations as an entrepreneur. Note number one, this is not magic beans. And that is how it gets presented sometimes. It's just magic beans. You drop the beans into the ground, beanstalk goes all the way up into the clouds, you climb up there and you get everything you want. Um, it's, that's not how it works in any business. It's going to take some time. I have a formula I'll share with you called 1357. 1357 means this. Here's generally, and understand, there's no guarantees in any of this stuff. It's going to be dependent on what you do, the fear that you face, and talents and skills that you have, and resources and abilities and whatever, all that stuff, right? No guarantees. But generally, it's going to take you about a year, new people, listen to me, about a year for you to become competent and profitable. About a year for you to be able to make a little bit of a profit, have your product taken care of, your expenses taken care of, make a few dollars. But generally, if you're treating this like a school, that's fine. You didn't get paid while you went to school. You're going to be going to school and you're going to be learning as you go. It's going to take about three years generally for a serious committed person to go from part-time to full-time, generally. It's going to take approximately five years of consistent effort, consistent study, consistent practice, consistent performance for you to become, to rise to the level of a, a serious income earner. You decide what that means for you. And it's going to take approximately seven years for you to become world class. World class. One of the best. Who'd like to have an ultimate goal of being world class? Show of hands, please. Understand it's not going to happen in 15 minutes. You can't just go to the one training and it's over. Go to, one, go to your company convention. Okay, I'm there now. No. That plus 10,000 hours. And then you get to get there. That's what it takes. You want to become world class at something, anything? Any doctors in the room? Any doctors, medical doctors? How, how many years did it take for you to become a doctor? Eight years? Ten and ten? So approximately how many, if you could add it up, how many hours of practice? Study, classroom, internships, before you were able to actually be given the tools to be able to go do what you could do and be paid for it. I, I've done the math before, and the average is about 18,000 hours. Same thing for an attorney. Same thing for anybody who, think about a world-class athlete. How, how, how many hours of practice does it take? 
before they're a world-class athlete. Huge amount. A, 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 a top-level musician. Huge amount. A person who's skilled at anything. A chef. Huge amount. So just understand that you're going to get paid while we go there. You don't have to wait till the end to start getting paid. You're going to get paid as we go there. But understand, all of that pay that you're getting before your world class is bonus pay. It's not something that you just really earned fully, right? Company did a bunch for you. Team did a bunch for you. Events will do a bunch for you. There'll be people who are filling in all kinds of your lack of skill. They'll be filling that in with support system. And you, get, you still get to earn the money. At the beginning, I'll give you an example. I had almost no skill. Here was my skill. I would go and I would grab a person and I would say, hey, hey. there's this meeting. It's going to be held down at the Sheraton. It's going to be amazing. If I swung by and picked you up, would you go with me? It lasts about 45 minutes. Afterwards, we can have a, have a drink or something in the lounge. Would you go with me? Just so I'm not by myself because I don't, don't really want to go by myself. Would you go with yes. me? All right. So I would drag this person <laughs> to the event. We would sit down. Sit down. We'd sit in the event and... My job was to sit there with him like this and go, isn't this something? Isn't this amazing? Isn't this spectacular? This is unbelievable. Look at that clown. He's making that kind of money. It's stupid. If he can make that kind of money, we can make a fortune. This is unbelievable. This is amazing. This is spectacular. This is fantastic. Oh, and, and after the meeting, I would just say, hey, and I would bring him to my sponsor. I'd bring him to the speaker. And I would say, I need to introduce you to this guy. I've been telling, I've been, this is the guy I've been telling you about. This guy's unbelievable. He can do spectacular stuff. Yeah. Guys, talk about how you can make money together. And then I'd sit back and I'd just do this like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I'd bring him over to the next person. Oh, no, stand up. This is unbelievable. Oh, this is spectacular. This is the one I was telling you about. And then I go, wait a minute. He's black. He needs to talk to somebody black. So I come over here. I say, you guys need to have your own thing. Go, 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 go. Right? And then he would, and as soon as I get away a little bit, my friend Ace would say, so is this a really thing for real? And he'd go, yeah, yeah, it's really for real. These white people know what they're doing. Yeah, kind of. They know what they're doing. We could do it better. It's okay. Right? Yeah, they do the handshake and all that stuff. I didn't even try. And I, then I'd bring him back and I'd say, say so, well, what'd you like best? Everything. You like this? All right. And I'd ask the questions. Are you in or are you out? You want to do it? I'm in. All right, cool. There's another meeting on Thursday. Let's together, we'll bring some people. Okay. That was all my skill. That's all I had. <laughs> That's it. I didn't know how to do a presentation. I didn't know how to follow up. I didn't know how to close them. I didn't know how to do nothing. I was a body dragger. <laughs> all I knew how to do. For a year, that's all I did. And it works. But eventually I had to learn the words, right? I was paying attention to what was being said around the room and I started to learn the words so I could be that for my team. Because I could recruit with that process, but they were looking to me. I was like, ah, let me introduce you to Ace, you know? I was like, oh, I don't know. So I didn't have the skill, really. I, I was okay at inviting to an event. Pretty good at that. And okay inviting to get somebody to, to take a look at a tool. But I really lacked when it came to doing a presentation, to following up, answering questions, and uh, overcoming objections, getting them started effectively. I just, the event did the work for me. So I was a rookie and amateur, but by utilizing the support system that was available to me, I could get the results. Where else can I cheat like that and get paid? 
If I did that in high school, they would have failed me and sent me to the principal. You didn't learn any of your theorems, they would tell me. You didn't learn any of the skills. You didn't memorize anything. I know. I know. <laughs> Network marketing itself gave me a support system that I could plug into. Now, other people weren't doing what I was doing, but this was my survival mechanism. And it worked. It kept me in the game long enough until I started to learn the skills. But I didn't go to the level that I needed to go to until I learned the skills. I kept having to rebuild my team with those skills. I could bring them in, but I couldn't get them moving. I finally had to learn how to develop some additional skills. So it's going to take time. And let me give you something else. For those of you watching, those for, for, for your notes, the truth is enough. Because in network marketing, we like to say it's easy, it's simple. That is relatively simple. The skills are not hard compared to other skills. It's, it's easy to be able to go uh, not easy, but it is simple to be able to learn these seven basic skills that we're talking about. Um, but it's not necessarily easy because it's an emotional business and, you know, the expectations are way out of whack and all this stuff. It's going to take some work. It's going to take some effort. You're going to have to sell some stuff. But sometimes we tend to exaggerate. As a group, we're guilty of this, yes? Exaggeration. The truth is enough. What has more credibility? This is hard, but it's worth it. Or this is easy, it's simple, just get in. You don't have to do nothing. I'll do everything for you. <laughs> what do you need me for? Just give me your list. I'll call them. <laughs> Not the best approach. So... Now, I will tell you this. As you get started in expectations, your early results are going to be different. For some of you, you're going to get off to a fast start. You know why? Because you've been a giver your whole life. You've been a person of influence, a person of value, a person of integrity. and because when, So when you make the phone call, when you get started, people will respond. Just out of respect. They'll respond. And then there are some of you that have been, let, let me say it kindly, less giving. If, you, if you're like me, you were more of a taker. That's what I was when I started. I was more of a taker. I mean, I, I had nothing to give, really. I was more involved in self-preservation than I was in, in, in being a, a better friend or, or helping out somebody else. Just understand, if you've been a taker for a part of your life, you're going to get punished a little bit at the beginning when you call somebody and say, oh, you want to talk to me now. You didn't answer my phone call for six months, and now we're best friends when there's opportunity attached. You know, you're going to have to deal with that, and that's on you. But here's the good news. You can rehabilitate that image pretty, pretty fast. I learned how to rehabilitate it. When I got shut down and said, you know, look, I'm really sorry that I made you feel that way. I was scrambling. But when I did see this, I did think about you. Not as something for me, but, but as something for you. And um, if I made you feel like, uh, in this, even in this process, that you were part of some end result for me, I apologize for that. Let's rebuild. Let's go have breakfast. Let's go have lunch. And let's, you know, put business on the side for a second. Let me know if I can help. Let me know if I can do something. Responding to things, doing things, helping out. Um, but, but try, it, some people think, as far as expectations, some, some of you that have joined network marketing almost didn't join because you didn't think you had enough influence. You didn't think you knew enough people. You didn't think you were a strong enough person. You didn't think you were a salesperson. You didn't think you were a, uh, you know, a person that could, could convince other people to do things. So you almost didn't join for that. But it doesn't matter where you start. I'm proof of that. And there's a lot of people who are proof of that. Doesn't matter where you start, just matters that you start and that you're willing to be a little bit embarrassed maybe at the beginning while you figure your stuff out. It's okay. The key is to start and try not to compare. 
your results at the beginning versus somebody else's results at the beginning. The vice president of the bank joins and they sign up 22 people in two days. And then you join. You talk to 22 people in two days and everybody says no. And you start thinking, well, maybe there's something wrong with me. That's not the case. Don't worry about that stuff. It's a long race. It's a marathon. You're going to be planting seeds for a long time. You're going to be talking to people for a long time. You're going to be helping people for a long time. But it's going to take some time. Here's the thing. How many people have started a, a traditional business? Show of hands, please. Traditional business. Call, just call out. How much did you invest in starting your business? 200000 100000 150 10000 30000 50,000, 15,000, half a million, huh? 250,000, 400,000, everything you had. Two questions for you. Well, first of all, the average in the United States, I don't know exactly what it is around the world, but $65,000 is the average small business in the United States, what they invest to start it. Now, that's just all of you who raised your hands. You, know, you understand that that's just the starting point, right? That initial investment isn't the last investment you're going to make. So how, same, the people who answered, raise your hands, please. How long did you expect it when you started? Did you expect it to be able to get your initial investment back? Your expectation, not reality. Three years, five years, two years, five years, two years. Five years, three years, five years, three years, three years, one year. Now, depending on the size of the investment, was, is, that's gonna, if it's a million dollars, it might take a little longer. If it's $10,000 or less, it might take a little bit shorter as far as your expectation. Now, how many of you met that expectation? You, you, you got that investment back in that period of time. How many did not? How many would just be thrilled to get their initial investment back eventually? <laughs> The average person expects about two to three years. It usually takes five plus to get their initial investment back. So in setting expectations about network marketing, what's the initial investment to get involved with a typical company? Now, I don't know what your company is that you're watching at home, but it's hard to spend a lot of money. It's hard. I mean, most, I mean, I don't want to give any specific number, but it's really, really tough to join a company for more than five grand. Really tough. The barrier of entry is so low. The amount of support is so high. The, the, you know, the amount of risk is just minuscule. And yet, if we don't get our investment back in three weeks, we're ready to quit. <laughs> we expect all business rules to not apply to what we're doing here. Part of that is how we, we, you know, the language and the exaggeration that happens inside of our business, exaggerating how easy it is, exaggerating how fast it's going to be, exaggerating how much you're going to make, you know, talking about just the few stories versus most of the stories. The income disclosures in your company are there for a reason, to understand that most people don't finish anything. And I understand those income disclosures are lower than you'd like to see, but you know what? 70% of people who join as a distributor in any company are consumers. They're just using the product. They're not going to engage in the business side of the business. Even though they have a business designation, they're consumers, 70%. So you have to add all of those into the numbers in order to be able to get that income disclosure. But is that a picture of reality? The answer is yes. So you need to be engaged with that income disclosure. And it's okay to tell people. Here are the averages. It's okay to tell people, this is what you can expect. Now, here's, what, here's a path for you to excel. 90% of people who get a real estate license never sell a single home. 90%. They go through the school. They get the license. They don't sell a single home. Guess what? That's called the way it is in everything. Most people who start college never finish. Most people who start a book never finish. Mo some people who bought this course haven't even made it to module four. If you're still here, hey, give yourself a thumbs up, pat on the back. 
True. So, in network marketing, understand this. You're going to be pushed. You're going to be pushed. This is not something where, in a traditional job, guess what you do? In a traditional job, you go into that job, you get training for how long? A couple weeks, a month, three months? That probation period where they don't give you insurance? Whatever that is, right? Right? And then you just repeat that skill and we'll see what happens. Here, it's not like that. You're going to come in and you're going to start and you're going to be pushed. You're going to have to figure yourself out emotionally. You're going to have to figure out different tactics and strategies. You're going to have to evolve as your company evolves and compensation changes and product shifts and, and markets go from up momentum to level off to down momentum and back and back again. You're going to have to learn to deal with all that stuff. You're going to be pushed. You're going to need to engage in emotional development, mental development, and, and, and decide to be a lifelong learner. Decide that you're going to be a learner. You're just going to continue to learn. You're going to learn more than anybody else, not just to learn, but to put it into practice. You're going to have to get your mind around this concept of rejection. No doesn't mean no. I don't get rejected at all. Ever, ever. Um, now, they might reject my product. They might reject the opportunity. But I don't view it as a rejection of me. I'm just going to give them the information. I'm going to act like a consultant. I'm going to work through the process. But you got to get your head around that. Because some people would rather have a job where they just don't have to deal with that. They can go hide every day in that cubicle. They go through the motions. At the end of the year, they get their 2% increase and and off they go. They get their performance review. They go do it again. And they'd rather be there than deal with any potential emotional pain. Here's what it's going to take. It's going to take time. It's going to take work. It's going to take growth. It's going to take skills. It's going to take focus. And it's going to take mental toughness. That's what it's going to take. If you can accept that, you're good. If you're not willing to accept that, you, gotta have, you have a little bit of a challenge. Here's how network marketing professionals get paid. They put in the time, effort, energy, enthusiasm. And then they get underpaid. That's part of the expectation that you need to get solid on. You're going to be underpaid for quite a while. You're going to be underpaid while you're learning. You're going to be underpaid while you're building something. You're going to be underpaid while you're developing something. You're going to be underpaid while you're figuring it out. You're going to be underpaid even if you have the skill for a season. And depending, how many of you started your own business? Raise your hands. How many feel like you were underpaid while you were building it? <laughs> Keep your hands up. You're going to be underpaid. You're going to put in the time and there's not going to be the money. You're going to put in the effort, there's not going to be the results. You're going to do the work. This is called entrepreneurship entry level. If you don't get there, I can't help you. So you're going to get underpaid for quite a while. Then you're going to get fairly paid for a very short period of time. You're going to get paid just what you're worth. But then you get to get overpaid for a long period of time. That's the price of entry. Price of entry is underpaid for a season, fairly paid, and then overpaid. Now here's the thing. Most people are, cannot handle that. They, they want a fair pay from day one. And if that's you, a big business, a big entrepreneurial business is probably not for you. You, you know, maybe you use the product, maybe you introduce a few people, but a big business, freedom, is probably not for you if you're not willing to make that trade. And you have to also change the way you view work. Because guess what? If I bring, I travel all over the world. And if I bring up the word work to the average person around the world, what do you think that comes to mind? Pain, drudgery, obligation, something I have to do, something I want to get over with as quickly as possible. Thank God it's Friday <laughs> because this weekend I don't have to work. Oh, it's Sunday night. Tomorrow I have to go back to work, right? I want to retire because I'm sick of work. 
That's how we've been trained our whole lives. Then we join network marketing. And we're like, ha, I'm in business for myself. This is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> this is awesome. <sighs> I think I'll take the day off. <laughs> right? People who haven't missed a sick day in 48 years. Their first day in network marketing, they take the day off. I got to learn. I got to study. You know, I got to got to read my manuals. I got to watch some videos. Got to watch this this first steps training course one more time. I'll get ready. I'll be there. But tomorrow, <laughs> I think I'm coming down with something. I'll go to I'll go to my job. But when I get home, you know, I need my rest. Same person will go, you know, they'll, they'll go to work all week long. And then when it comes time to go build their business, you know, I need to have more balance. <laughs> I need to have more balance in my life. I need a little me time. A little me time. Try that at the office. Working for somebody else. Middle of the afternoon, they call a meeting. You know, you know I need a little me time. Try that one out. So just understand, it's a business. You're going to get underpaid, fairly paid, and then overpaid. Most top network marketing professionals are getting paid for what they've done years ago. Years ago. They get paid today for what they did years ago. And ultimately, it's worth it. This is your business. I want to write something down and show it to you. Something that a friend showed to me that I just love. I will help you build your business. And that's an expectation that I heard at the beginning. Come on in, I'll help. That's why you have an upline. You have all these people invested in your success. I'll help you build a business. Anybody ever heard that? Okay. So you, that you join and you just say, okay, Help. Help me out. But I learned that there's actually some punctuation here. I will help <laughs> you build your business. I'll help but you build the business. This is your business. Success or failure is up to you, right? You're going to rise or fall based upon your effort, talent, ability, willingness to, to, to face your fears, willingness to learn, willingness to grow. I'll help. You build it. Okay? You're in charge. This is a business with a support system attached, but it's yours. It's not your company's responsibility to build you up. It's not your team leader, and it's not your, your system, and it's not your company training, and any, any of that stuff. None of that matters. I will help. You build your business. If you fail, it's on you. If you succeed, it's on you. You did that. You made that happen. The goal here is to help you. The goal of this course is to help you become independent as quickly as possible. If we could teach you how to become independent of your support system, independent of the training, independent of anything else, that you can go grow a business, then we will have succeeded. If you're still dependent, then we have to get that employee mentality out of your mind and move you to another level. Employees don't whine about a lack of support. They go create the support. Entrepreneurs don't whine about the lack of support. They create support. Entrepreneurs don't whine about the lack of training. They go solve the problem, create the training. They go make it happen. They go get it. Like you've, you're, you're done being here or people getting this course. They go get it. They go solve the problem. That's what entrepreneurs do. So here's the thing. When it comes to expectations, this is really big. I want you to think like a warrior. I want you to think like an entrepreneur. I want you to think like a champion, somebody who is beginning the effort to become a world-class empire builder, somebody who's going to not only take care of your family, but take care of 
help other people take care of their families. The number of lives you're going to touch with the products and services is enormous. The number of lives you're going to touch with the financial opportunity is enormous. Even if that's not real for you right now, it requires a little bit of faith, being able to see something before it's obvious to the rest of the world. It requires a little bit of that. But give it time. Number one, give it time. We need to have a long-term view with short-term urgency. I want you to be thinking 10 years from now, but also what do I need to do in the next 24 hours? Urgency in the short term, but with a long-term patient vision that you're going to build something important that's going to stand the test of time. Give it time. Number two, give it effort. Put in the work. Number three, continue to learn. Don't ever stop learning. Number four, be a professional. Number five, there's no, it's not magic beans and there's no free lunch. And lastly, it's worth it. There's so many reasons. It's worth it, okay? So just understand, I, what I hope, maybe I brought some of you down that came in that thought that this was going to be instant money. It's just like a money tree. Shake it. And the money falls off. No, you got to plant it. You got to tend it. You got to protect it. You got to nurture it. You got to give it some sunlight. You got to give it some nutrients, right? And then you have to be patient enough for it to grow so you have something for the long term, okay? Okay.